So I'm really excited to have everybody who's joining here today. And I really hope that you all take something from today and that it will help you all in some way or another. Um, I do recommend that you have a pen and paper handy. You might not have brought one along. So I'll give you 30 seconds to find something just in case you want to write down something that's, um, that, that you instantly want to try or take away. So I'm going to just pause for about 30 seconds for you to grab a uh, pen and paper um, where I won't say anything key that you could not miss. Hi everyone joining. Cool, okay, then let's get on with it. So I've split this webinar into a background information about sciatica because I think that knowledge is power and the more that you know about sciatica and understand what it is, the less anxious and stressed you'll feel about having it. And that really is important with pain management that we don't also have stress and anxiety uh, layered on top of that. And it's very natural when people are in pain that they're gonna feel anxious and stressed. So I think the more you know, the less stress and anxiety you have about it. And also because you need to understand the background of sciatica and what causes sciatica to know exactly how you should specifically manage and treat it. So first of all as well, a short disclaimer, if you're being managed by someone for sciatica, if you're seeing a physio, a chiropractor, an osteopath, you should always follow your practitioner's advice because it's tailored specifically to your circumstances. What I'm going to give you is general information on sciatica and the advice that I give the majority of people with sciatica, which I find helps the most. But if you're being managed by someone, my advice shouldn't replace theirs, so that's really important. And a little bit about me, because you might be thinking, well, who is this guy and what does he know about sciatica and why should I listen to him? I have been a chiropractor for 10 years and I'm also a personal trainer and I am the owner of Backspace Chiropractic in Clapham in South London. Uh, and I'm really passionate about showing my patients also how to take control of their own situations so they know what they should do. So this is why I wanted to do these webinars so we can help as many people as possible. And you can share this knowledge uh, with other people as well. Now, lockdown has caused lots of people to suffer all kinds of symptoms more people are getting things like sciatica so i wanted to do this to help um, and like i said the more you understand about the condition the, the better it will be so i'm going to give you some background and then i'm going to give you the tips and stretches to help you get out of pain and stay out of pain so most of you are probably here for that bit what can i do uh, but please rest assured that the information is equally of value to you so let's get in uh, let's get stuck in, sorry, sciatica. So what's the definition of sciatica? Well, the sciatic nerve is a nerve that runs from the lower back down the glutes and into the leg. And sciatica is, is, is defined as pain in the distribution of the sciatic nerve. So if you're having leg pain uh, in a place where the sciatic nerve innervates, that would be called sciatica. So the important thing to take from that is that sciatica is not a diagnosis. It is not a condition, it's a symptom. And symptoms are caused by something else. So it's a little bit like having a, a headache. A headache is a symptom, but it's not a condition. Uh, a headache, a condition would be migraine, for example, or a cause would be stress in the case of, for example, tension type headache. Sciatica is caused by something. And that's really important because when you're treating your own sciatica and you're, you're doing stretches or strengthening exercises, you need to make sure that the, the strengthening and stretching exercises you're doing are for the specific cause of your sciatica. Because you might get advice from someone, oh, try this stretch, you know, my, my friend gave me this stretch and it won't work for you. And that can make you feel quite anxious and stressed. Uh, and it doesn't work because the cause of that person's sciatica is different to the cause of yours. So that's a really uh, key lesson there. Now, um, I'm going to just show a brief video on sciatica, uh, not on sciatica, sorry, on the anatomy of the lower back so that you can actually see the sciatic nerve um, and, and get in your mind, uh, put a picture to sciatica rather than um, it just being this pain that happens to you. And I think that's really important. I'm a very, a very visual person. So I'm gonna share my screen um, with you. Uh, and now, th those of you on Instagram, don't panic. I'm going to point my camera at the screen now because I know that you can't see this. I'm going to also share my computer's uh, actually. So, hopefully, you'll be able to see my screen. So you can. Now, I'm going to show you this uh, video. This is a software we use on um, at Backspace. 
and I've got the sound off. So you can see this guy here. Let's just turn this around. So, turn this around. Otherwise, I'm adding filters to myself here. Don't want to do that. Oh, there we go. That's what I want to do. Okay. So here we can see the lower back, we can see the lumbar spine. These are the five lower vertebrae of the back and everything yellow on this diagram is a nerve. So you can see inside the spine here, um, there's the lumbar spine, the bottom lower five vertebrae. And as the diagram turns around slowly, sorry Instagram watchers, you can see my shaky hand. This yellow structure is the sciatic nerve. Uh, sorry, this yellow structure down the center is the spinal cord. And at each level, you can see these branches coming out. The sciatic nerve is at the bottom here. It's this big nerve. As you can see it's quite huge. It's two centimeters on average in diameter. And that's made by all of these nerve roots which join together. They come out of the spinal cord and they join together to form this sciatic nerve at the bottom, which goes down the legs and into the glutes. And if I keep pressing play, you can replace the spine there. And then you can see you've got these vertebrae the bony parts, and then you've got these discs in between. And that's a disc from above. And I'm going to stop that video there because that's all I wanted to show you at this stage. So now you've got a little image of what sciatica, uh, not sciatica, what uh, the anatomy of the lower back looks like, which is really important. And, uh, and when we talk about sciatica, sciatica is irritation to that big yellow nerve you saw there in the glutes. So, as I said, it's the biggest nerve in the body and it innovates the leg and it gives uh, power to the muscles and it also brings in sensation from the leg into the spinal cord and to the brain where it's processed. And that's why you can get both pain, sensations coming from the leg, and you can also get weakness in the leg because the messages from the brain are not connecting to the, to the muscles uh, because they're being blocked by something along the line, along that uh, the course of the nerve from the brain to the spine to the leg. It's usually, irritate, it's usually due to irritation and inflammation to the nerve. It's most common on one side, so you usually get it in one leg or buttock or the, or the other, and it's usually aggravated by bending forward, twisting, sitting, and if anybody who's got or had sciatica knows very, very uh, well, coughing or sneezing, that can be quite an experience if you've got sciatica. And that's because when you cough or sneeze, you very rapidly, very massively increase the intra-abdominal pressure and the spine lives inside our abdominal cavity. And so if you suddenly and forcefully <laughs> contract, you will squeeze the spine and then you can increase the pressure uh, on the lower back and that can cause further irritation to the nerve. If you get compression as well, so I said that sciatica was mostly due to irritation of the nerve and inflammation, uh, but if you also get direct compression, Imagine standing on a hose pipe. Uh, you're gonna block the signals that go down. Uh, you're gonna block the water uh, in the pipe. But the same thing can happen. A disc or a bone can actually push against the, the sciatic nerve, and that can actually then uh, block the nerve signals coming up or going down uh, past that point, which is why you get that weakness and why you might get numbness as well. And of course, pain alongside that. So, Treating the symptoms of sciatica might be using ice or painkillers or resting or waiting to see what happens or trying some stretches, but you're not necessarily going to be treating the cause. Treating the cause is about figuring out what's causing your sciatica and then doing specific exercises to fix that. So how do we know what's causing sciatica? So most often sciatica is caused by a bulging disc. In the older population, you can also get sciatica due to uh, spinal stenosis, where the hole through which the yellow nerve comes out through the spine is narrowed, and it can be narrowed by thickening of the ligaments. It can be caused by degeneration in the bone, or wear and tear, and then bones can actually grow thicker. And that all encroaches on the space through which the nerve comes through, and that causes uh, our sciatic symptoms. Other causes are conditions like spondylolisthesis, which just means in Latin, slipping of the spine. Spondylo means spine, and listhesis means slipping. And there are five different types of spondylolisthesis. So seeing someone who knows about these things is really important to get an accurate diagnosis so you get um, treatment which is directly, specifically for your problem. 
And then on top of that structural change, you can also get, of course, muscle spasm, inflammation help, um, as well, which adds further uh, fuel onto the fire. And if you also have poor posture, or if you're slightly overweight, or your muscles are deconditioned, those all contribute to making the experience of sciatica in general worse. The good news is it's very rarely due to anything sinister. And again, if you're seeing a professional, that can be ruled out through uh, questions and, and tests. I thought it'd be quite interesting to have some facts so you know that if you're a sciatica sufferer, you're not alone. Um, now, even though there was a lot more interest uh, from the uh, female population in, in, in this uh, webinar, it's actually equally common in men and women. Uh, sciatica, the symptom, is most common in your 40s. But, of course, if the cause is something like a disc problem, slipped discs or disc bulges are more common in your, in your younger years, in your 30s, um, whereas uh, sciatica from wear and tear and arthritic change is more common in the older population. But as an, on an average, it's in your 40s. And about 10 to 14% um, of people, 10 to 40% of people get sciatica in their lives. So it's really, really common. Um, and so it's, it's often uh, quite depressing if you have something like sciatica because you think you're one in a million, you know, or one in a thousand, but actually 40, up to 40% of people get it in their lives. It's really rare in your 20s. So if, you get, if you're getting leg pain and you're thinking, do I have sciatica and you're in your 20s, I would say it's probably due to something else. Um, it is not an impossible uh, situation, but it's, it's less likely. And some studies uh, do suggest that there's a genetic link, that it runs in your families, but my personal opinion on that is that although there might be a genetic link, we learn our behaviour from our parents, how they move, their posture, uh, their dietary habits often, and then exercise and activity habits as well. We tend to copy our parents to some degree. So just even if there is a genetic link, that's a positive uh, side to that, you're not destined to have it if you decide to look after these things. And we know that there's an occupational link as well with people who operate machinery, people who are, for example, truck drivers in specific or drive long hours because of the, the prolonged sitting, but also the vibration uh, that occurs. Uh, and often uh, people who have jobs where they're subjected to really awkward positions very regularly, um, people who are you know, uh, perhaps uh, you know, um, fitting boilers or plumbers working under sinks and, and lots of bending and twisting, that's probably the worst thing for the lower back in general. So these groups of people get things more commonly. As I've, as I've mentioned, there's often pain in the lower back and it's almost always on one side, uh, in the buttock and the leg, and it can often go down as far as the foot. And it's usually described as a burning sensation in the buttocks, and it often comes with some tingling or numbness or a prickling sensation, and uh, sometimes weakness in the leg, and which can feel heavy. So if those sound familiar to you and you're wondering, do I have sciatica? It's quite likely the case, uh, but a practitioner can confirm that. A lot of people will also wonder, do I need a scan for my sciatica? Uh, usually not. It's not necessary to have a scan to diagnose your sciatica or to figure out why you've got sciatica. Um, a course of treatment with a professional will usually get rid of the problem, but if you don't have a response to treatment within six to eight weeks, then it might be worth considering a scan, but it's up to the professional to, to help you come to that conclusion. And another really important um, condition I wanted to mention uh, today is um, piriformis syndrome. Piriformis syndrome, because um, pir piriformis, uh, the piriformis is a muscle in the buttocks. And because the sciatic nerve anatomically runs very close to the, uh, to the piriformis muscle in the hips and buttocks, this can cause sciatic symptoms. And that's really common. I know many of our viewers um, on Facebook and on Instagram are, are um, keen on physical exercise, uh, runners and endurance athletes. So these, these, uh, this group of people can get um, sciatic-like symptoms because of the inflammation that can occur if the piriformis muscle is is really heavily used. So they will tend to get um, pain when you press on the uh, piriformis muscle, you can actually um, reproduce the pain and make it worse. Uh, and that's a kind of a positive test, a positive test along with a few other things. Um, along with uh, walking up inclines or stairs and people who find out they get sort of stiffness in the hip as well, that can, that can uh, indicate the person has piriformis syndrome. So that's a, uh, one thing that can cause sciatica. 
So what do we do about it? So I'm getting to the part that most of you are probably here for today. So what's really important is that you have a whole package of care. Doing one thing alone is not necessarily going to get rid of the problem or it might um, help, but it'll be a much slower process. It's about doing um, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. General advice you know, is to have a daily stretching routine. I'm going to give you some specific stuff in a sec. Um, but having that regular routine of stretching in the morning and the evening will really make a big difference to the tension in the back and stop it from accumulating. Um, practicing good upright posture. This is really, really important. A lot of people, especially in lockdown, have been sitting on their sofas using their laptops or even sitting in their beds using their laptops, effectively not using um, ergonomically designed uh, furniture to do their work. So they've been adopting these kind of hunched or flexed postures and that's really bad for the lower back. So we can talk uh, for a long time about posture. Uh, I'm not going to, this is not necessarily a posture webinar, but having good upright posture, which means standing with a good uh, level of pelvic tilt, to make sure that you can see me okay, so that you've got right, a little bit lower. So making sure that you are standing with your belt line horizontal is a, is a good quick tip if you look in the mirror. You don't want it to be like this, angulated towards the floor. Um, so just keeping the hips level, so you just clench your buttocks slightly to bring that to a horizontal position, then you know your lower back is in a neutral position. And not having your upper back slumping, so you're just lifting your sternum slightly. Effectively, the, the, the quickest hack, if you want to call it that with posture, is to um, think tall. So you're making your, your, your spine taut. So imagine you're holding a chain, you would pull both ends of the chain, and that would make all of the links align. Think of your vertebrae in that way. So you're just making yourself tall, and everything will just come into a, a better alignment. Um, so practicing good posture is really, really helpful for those who have sciatica. Sitting well as well. So we'll talk, I'll show you in a second, I'm gonna do a demonstration with uh, how to sit. Um, who'd have thought I'd be teaching people how to sit. But um, getting in and out of a chair and getting in and out of a bed correctly will help your sciatica to heal faster, but it will also help to prevent you getting sciatica in the first place. And then, you know, I don't want to, to, to point out the obvious, but avoid those activities you know that bring on the sciatica, or take time to try to change them. If you are working in awkward positions, try to, try to work around uh, and uh, move more uh, carefully. Avoid the bending and the twisting. They're the things that are going to aggravate you. So keep your hips and your, and your, and your shoulders in line, rather than twisting um, like this. So move everything as a unit like that. Again, this isn't a posture webinar, I'll talk about sciatica, but um, moving well is really important. And then regular light exercises, which are really good for sciatica, are in particular walking. Walking is really good for the back. So if you're in pain and you don't know whether you should lie down or sit down or stand, walk. Walking is really good for the lower back. Uh, and it helps to hydrate our discs because of the motion that occurs, the rocking motion that occurs in the lower back. That helps to uh, bring nutrients in and to remove metabolic waste products from the disc, which helps it to heal faster. Swimming is brilliant as well, or aquatherapy, because you've got no gravity and no shock forces. So it's nice and slow, and you've got the resistance of the water, which helps to uh, strengthen you. And then using proper lifting techniques. A lot of people, they get sciatica because they, they herniate a disc because they've lifted awkwardly. awkwardly. And I've recently done a video on how to bend safely. Um, I've got some links to share with you, um, which I'm going to put in the chat box. Those of you who are on um, Instagram or Facebook, I will add them afterwards. Like I said, I am um, um, streaming this live from Zoom, so it's mainly for the Zoom uh, followers, but I am going to put them as comments in the link to videos and chat today. So I've just sent the how to bend thing. Open that to the tab in your browser. We'll come back to it later. So that's general advice. So we're going to get more specific and more specific. So what can you do? If you um, are in pain, so I'm going to talk about the what to do to relieve your sciatica when you're in full-blown sciatica, and then what you can do when you don't have sciatica. Rather than just, oh, I forget I ever had sciatica, I'm feeling fine now. What can you do 
to prevent it coming back, because you, I'm sure you'll agree if you've ever had it before, you never want it again. So over-the-counter medications, if necessary, um, your non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen, paracetamol, of course, if it's safe for you to take them. If that doesn't work, then you want to see your GP to have some proper medical advice on what you should or shouldn't take, but it might be necessary to take something stronger. And with medications, and not anti-medication, I think medication is important to allow you to move comfortably. You can't necessarily do the exercises if you're in severe acute pain. So it's about being practical. First, get your pain levels under, the, under control, then try doing exercises. It's probably not a good idea if you've got awful, raging, agonizing sciatica um, to start doing stretches. It's best for you to just get things under control. So take your medication, uh, if you've been prescribed one from the GP or over-the-counter stuff to start with. Use cold. Now, there is um, evidence to, um, for the use of heat and cold for sciatica, but if you're having an acute spasm and it's, it's strong and it's painful, opt for cold because cold is anti-inflammatory. Cold also has been shown if you can decrease the temperature of the area, you will actually slow down the nerve conduction of pain. So it actually slows down the signals coming to the brain, so it's not so intense. So cold has multiple benefits. It also decreases the blood supply to the area, and that's why the inflammation then decreases. And of course, if it's really, really bad, you know, see a chiropractor, an osteopath, a physiotherapist, uh, someone who knows how to manage sciatica. Uh, massage can be helpful. Um, you know, at, at times, if you have a very knowledgeable massage therapist as well, uh, but definitely see someone who's, who's trained to manage sciatica. So again, so as, as I said, I'm getting more and more specific, uh, and I'm going to give you some practical advice, some positions and some stretches that you can do, and I, I'd like you and invite you to uh, try doing them with me now if you want to, um, or you can watch this video back uh, at another time. First of all, if you're in really bad pain, there's a relief position uh, called the 1990 position. I'm going to lower my uh, screen for you to see because I'm going to get down on the floor in a second. So, if you're in pain and you don't know how to how to be, and uh, you try walking around enough and you want to just lie down and, and relax, um, or if you want to use your ice pack, um, then uh, this is a great position to use it in. So, find the edge of a sofa. You'll probably be very slowly getting down to the floor, of course. And then the position you want to get to is legs up on the sofa, knees bent to around 90 degrees, and hips bent to around 90 degrees. This is a relief position. It relaxes the sciatic nerve by removing the tension that occurs in the hip, glutes, and knee, and hamstrings. All of these areas will now be completely relaxed and allow the sciatic nerve to slacken and therefore feel a lot more comfortable. So this is called a relief position. It's literally, as the name suggests, just a position where you can find relief. Most people with sciatica will find this very, very comfortable. So, um, so you can try, try that position. I'm just gonna quickly switch off the alarm on my, on my iPhone so that people on Instagram aren't, uh, aren't using it. So that's your relief position there, number one tip. And you can put an ice pack under your back whilst lying in that position as well. Uh, make sure your ice packs are always wrapped in something. Don't put it directly on the skin. Those who've been with that before will know that that's very painful. You can get uh, all kinds of blisters and burning. So wrap it in a damp tea towel. And then gentle stretching. So we're gonna do some, some gentle stretching. So um, first of all, stretching of the lower back and um, glutes. We're gonna Lie down on the floor, knees bent, and then pick up your knees one at a time and pull them towards your chest very slowly, very gently. If you feel that you get sharp pain, pause, wait a few seconds, take a deep breath because that will often help you to relax, and then pull towards the chest. Breathe in pull towards the chest as you breathe out. Always increase the stretch as you breathe out. So breathe in, out. And you can hold the stretch once for about 30 seconds. 
and then you can put your legs down. So that's the first stretch. The second stretch is for the buttock muscles. So, picking up the knee with the opposite hand, bring the knee to the chest, and then take it across to the other side. The other leg can be relaxed down. And you should feel a stretch in the buttock. Here, gently pulling the knee further, breathing in, out, taking the knee further across. 30 seconds again. Swap sides, grab the knee with the opposite hand, pull towards you, and then across. So you're kind of aiming towards the opposite shoulder, knee to opposite shoulder, breathe in, out, pull with your arm muscles, the knee further across and breathe in, out. Good. So another stretch we can do is um, more specifically for that piriformis muscle I spoke about before. You sit, you bring your uh, knee up first of all, your foot up like this, foot up on the opposite knee, and then you're going to reach for this leg, the one with the foot on the ground, pick it up, and pull it towards your chest. Keep your, your head down on the floor, and you're aiming to push the other knee further away. I'm going to do this in a different position so you can see better. Like this. We want that knee to go that way, so away from us rather than coming up like this. Grab the knee and pull towards you. You can push with the elbow if you are flexible enough. If not, don't worry. Do what you can. Just bring the Bring this thigh towards you. You're holding behind the knee and the hamstring, pulling it towards you. So again, it's 30 seconds. Breathing in, out, pull. If it hurts, don't go any further. Okay, remember, I don't have side to go at the moment, so I'm feeling okay with that one. Okay, so those are some simple, gentle stretches you can do for the lower back and chest. Another good, uh, good stretch for the, the sciatica is stretching your hamstrings. And for that, I recommend doing it in a standing position. Place the affected leg, although it's good to do it on both sides, out in front of you, heel digging into the floor. And then you're going to, I'm going to do it this way actually. So heel in the floor, straight leg, so lock the knee, lean on the opposite leg. So you're just bringing your low back, staying nice and, and uh, extended, and you're going to almost stick your bum out and your chest out at the same time, rather than bending like this. You want to keep that nice and straight. And you're just sitting back into the stretch. Do it from this angle. Common mistake is people lean on this leg that they're stretching, it should be leaning on the other side. There's enough um, tension happening. You don't need to add extra tension on that sciatic leg. And I recommend trying both sides. By all means, try this if you want to. So, heel into the ground and then lean on the opposite side. And again, this is 30 seconds. You can breathe in, breathe out. Again, sticking bum and chest out, not bending like this. Yeah, so stay proud with the, the head and neck and posture like this, and sitting back into the stretch. So that's a hamstring stretch. If that's too intense for you, um, there's a hamstring stretch that leads into my next exercise. Now, some of you who are perhaps more experienced with these things, uh, with sciatica, uh, may have heard of sciatic nerve mobilizations or sciatic nerve flossing as it's called which i'm sure it's <laughs> as the name uh, the name sounds terrible um, but what you're literally doing is you're moving the sciatic nerve within the leg and that helps to free it if it's trapped against something like a disc or trapped against um, a bone which is uh, which is a bit worn or, or, or a dehydrated disc so um what i'm going to show you is another um hamstring stretch which will lead into it's, it's a form of flossing. 
So you lie on your back, both legs bent, grab your affected leg. I'm going to pretend I have sight to bend my right leg. Luckily, I don't. I'm going to pick up the leg behind the knee, the hamstring. Now, the hamstring stretch element is just about straightening the leg. Sorry, my, my uh, telephone is, uh, is ringing. I'm going to turn that off so people can't call me. So sorry about that. Okay, back onto the floor. So this is live, and this is what happens when you're live. Okay, knees bend. Pick the sciatic leg up. Pull it to an upright position. You don't need to bring it to your chest. It just needs to be vertical from the, uh, from the hip to the knee. You're using your hands to keep it there so it can't fall down. And then all you're doing is you're straightening at the knee. You just go as high as you can. So first of all, we'll just do a straightforward hamstring stretch. So you can stretch your hamstrings like this, trying to lock out your knee. Now, if you have sciatica, this will hurt, and you might feel it as soon as here. But that's okay. If you stay there, you relax, you breathe, breathe out, and you try to straighten a little bit more. So this is the hamstring stretch. You can try to go as high as you feel like you can. But that's going to lead us into my next exercise, which is called the flossing exercise, the sciatic nerve mobilization. So for that, what we're going to do is add repeated movements. So we're going to, we're also going to bring the foot into the equation. So I lie down, grab the leg, point the foot towards you or the ceiling. Yeah. So pointing it this way, not that way. Okay, so point the toes towards you, like you're trying to give, you a, give, give a thumbs up with your, with your toes. Then you're going to straighten until you feel the pain. It will increase, that's, that's normal. Don't go too far, we don't want it to be sh uh, sharp pain, but just a tolerable level of discomfort. And then relax, so it's about five seconds, and then relax, and then slowly straighten into the pain, to feel the pain, breathe into it, breathe and out, and relax again. And you would do repetitions of that. Let me turn this linking alarm off. Repetitions. So you do about 10 reps, and you can do um, a couple of sets of those, and you can do them a couple of times a day. Because you are going to be moving the sciatic nerve, it can actually aggravate it if you do it too often. So as with anything, it's about moderation. Don't think the more I do, the better. It's not the case with, with stretching and strengthening. You know, stretching can be done once or twice a day, three times a day, those ones we did before for the low back and glutes. But the flossing and the strengthening, I would do no more than twice a day max. Uh, so the flossing, twice a day, I would say. So just to, just to recap again, I point the foot towards you, straighten, and then straighten, two, three, four, five, let go. Straighten, two, three, four, five, let go. Little tip, if you have sciatica that goes all the way down to the toes, you can try moving the foot as well. So what I would recommend then is, you might want to write, if you're writing notes, this is a good one to uh, remind you. Straighten until you feel the pain with the toes pointing towards you. When you feel it, hold and then point the foot away. Point the foot back towards you and then relax. Straighten, point the foot. Point the foot back, relax. So you're adding that extra element of the, to the floss, which is the foot, back, 
and relax. And I would do 10 repetitions of that. So that's sciatic nerve flossing. Um, and that is a very uh, good exercise for releasing your sciatic nerve. Um, okay, I also wanted to just show you something else, which is chairs. To show you chairs. So many people will hurt themselves when they have sciatica getting in and out of a chair or getting in and out of a bed. This can be quite an ordeal, uh, especially if your sciatica is related to an, uh, a bulging disc, because overnight as we sleep, having taken the weight off the spine, our, our discs decompress and they fill with um, hydration. So the next day you wake up having a nice, hopefully relaxed night's sleep. You get up out of bed without thinking, and with that big, uh, juicy disc, it bulges suddenly, and that can be quite a shock. So always think in the morning uh, about how you're getting out of bed. So I'm going to show you how to get out of bed, and then I'm going to show you how to get out of a chair. So this is going to be my bed. This is actually where Lenny sleeps, so he's not here right now, which is a good thing, my dog. So you're lying in bed. Hopefully you don't sleep on your front because that's not good for you. I'm going to assume you've been sleeping on your back, but you've woken up on your back. Bring your knees up. Bring your knees up and then turn your shoulders and your hips at the same time. So you're in a sideline position. Then you come to the edge of the mattress and you use your arms to lift you up as your feet out of the bed into a sitting position, then, sorry I just moved across, then in the sitting position you're going to split your feet and I'm going to show you this with the chair in a second and you push up off the back leg. Now in a chair and you, you do the reverse to get into bed but I'll just show you what I meant when I said push up off the back leg. In a chair First of all, in a chair, always sit with your feet flat on the ground, with your bum and your shoulder blades in the back, against the backrest of the chair. People usually sit either like this on their computers, or they'll sit like this. A big gap here. And changing that alone can be a huge, a, have, have a huge impact because you're spending hours and hours a day on, a, on an uncomfortable chair and you're not even using all the possible support available to you. So it's so simple to put your bone and shoulder blades back that it will have a massive effect. But getting out of a chair, what people most uh, usually will do wrong, especially when they're in this position, is just do that. Which is okay if you don't have sciatica, perhaps. But those of you who know, getting up out of a chair, sitting position, can be very, very painful. So the key is, sit up, shimmy to the front of the chair, Split your feet, and I recommend you put your strongest leg, which might be your non-sciatic leg, underneath you. And then, if your chair has arms, that's even better, because you can use your arms to help. But if not, put all of the weight onto this leg, and you're going to push up off that leg. And you can see, you can also do it in reverse. All of these things you can do in reverse. Um, you're using your leg power to get out of the chair, rather than just hooking yourself up using your, your spine effectively, um, and you're gonna cause your disc to be further bulged, or the nerve to be further pinched by whatever it's being pinched by. So split your feet, lean, keeping your chest upright, push off this leg up. You know, you can also get into a chair or, or even onto, the, onto and off of the toilet. This is another area where people with sciatica can really um, have a miserable time. You know, you can sit, put one leg back, and lean on that leg. Okay, so that's what I meant when I was by the uh, when I was pretending I was coming out of bed. Was that once you've gone to the upright position of sitting, come to the edge, split your feet, and push off your good leg. So it looks like this from the side again. I'm in bed up on the side of the mattress, split the feet and push up off this good leg or side of the mattress with your hands 
on this leg. So the sciatic leg is staying nice and relaxed. You're not loading it in any way. So you can push up on that leg. So try that one. That's a really good um, spine sparing uh, tip for you. Because with sciatica, the length of your recovery is really down to these little things that you do so many times a day, so many days a week, you know. So if you, if you can change them all and modify the way you do all these things, there's nothing stopping the sciatica from getting better at its fastest rate, which is as fast as the body will heal itself. Um, so, so be careful of the way you move. That's really, really important. Um, so I wanted to show you that. Oh, another nice tip, just if you're driving a car, cars are a nightmare for back pain, full stop, um, because car seats are just not designed for, for people with back pain. If you've got lumbar support, fantastic. I did a video on driving back pain recently, that's on our YouTube channel. Um, but again, imagine I'm in a car, been driving, park, <laughs> hopefully you park the car before you get out, and then turn, bit by bit to face directly out of the car. So, you know, the problem with car seats is you're, you're like this, and then you'll just go like this, yeah? But if you have sciatica, that's, you know, it's not about just gripping your teeth and just uh, getting out of the car. Bring your feet up, turn and put your feet onto the pavement, split your feet, and then get up, pushing up off the back leg. And you can get into the car the same way in reverse. So here's my car seat, open the door, and climb into the car this way. So the same thing. So little tips like that are really important when you have sciatica. Um, don't forget that one. Um, the other exercise I want to show you is, this is for pain relief still. We've got about 15 minutes left. I'm gonna spend about two minutes showing you the McKenzie exercise, which is amazing for decreasing disc Bulges. Now, like I said earlier, the commonest cause of uh, sciatica is a disc bulge, protrusion, slip disc. It's all the same thing, different names, different grades. So this is fantastic because what it does is it draws the disc bulge back in to the center. So it draws it back in where it, where it needs to be. So um, Mackenzie exercises, and then after that, I'm going to show you once you've got your sciatica under control, what you should do uh, to prevent it from coming back. So, very straightforward Mackenzie exercises. Anyone who's done yoga, these positions are gonna be quite uh, familiar to you. So, you have sciatica, remember these are pain relieving things you can do to get your sciatica uh, symptoms down and under control. So, uh, I'm gonna try both positions. I don't know which one will, uh, will be clearest, but let's try, actually, let's try this one. So, lie on the ground, hands just next to your head, and you're going to use your arm, arms by straightening to lift you up. That's really important. You don't use your back muscles. It's not one of those. You're using your arms to lift yourself up. Now, this position is called Cobra. Um, but with Mackenzie, what we're doing is we're repeatedly moving. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift up, slowly, breathe and relax for five seconds. That's important because what happens is when you breathe out, your tummy muscles relax and you drop, the spine extends further and that encourages the disc to go back into where it belongs. Um, I can explain that in more detail, but it will just take a bit of time, so I won't, just trust me. On that one, the disc bulge will decrease. Down again. Up. Slowly. Breathe. And down again. Maybe a couple of breaths would be a good idea. Back up again. So depending on your flexibility, you can also go higher by bringing your hands like this to your armpits. Breathe in, out, push up, breathe out again, further relaxation, and down again. So you only need to stay at the top for about five seconds. 
So those are called McKenzie exercises, and you just repeat the repetition until you do about two, two sets of 10, uh, is what I recommend. Just to show you with this way around as well, so you can see the angle. So let's pretend uh, we're going to this one. Stay for about five seconds on the top and then down again. Or up. up. And down. I'm just going to show you a couple. You don't need to watch me do an entire three sets. I'm sure you've got that one. Um, I've got a video of this one to share with you. Again, Instagram followers, don't panic. I will put you But you've got that one here. So watch those in your own time as well. So the flossing and the Mackenzie are, and the gentle stretching are the, the, the gold uh, nuggets I want you to take from that. Um, by flossing, you're gonna you're gonna move the sciatic nerve so it's not so trapped, and by doing the McKenzie, you're gonna reduce the disc bulge so it doesn't push against the sciatic nerve, and then the gentle stretching of the hamstrings, the low back, the glutes is there just to kind of get rid of general tension and keep you mobile, and then keep on moving, of course, as well. So, last but not least, what do you do when your sciatica has gone? You've done your Icing, you've been walking, you've stayed mobile, you've done some swimming maybe, you've taken some anti-inflammatories, you've done some stretching, you've done your static nerve flossing, you've done your McKenzie stretches, you know how to get in and out of bed and a desk and a car and um, you've done everything you possibly can and because you've done that and you've ticked all the boxes, your sciatica has improved much, much faster than it would have had you not done anything or, or um, you know, just taken medication. Um, you might have halved the recovery time. Well, now is the time to strengthen your back because ultimately exercise is the one thing that's going to prevent a relapse because back pain relapses in, in up to 60% of people within the six to two year, six month to two year period. So just know that relapse is the common pattern for low back pain. Um, you know, so that's normal, but there's a lot people can do to prevent that relapse from occurring. There are some general Exercises I'm a big fan of. Swimming, as I've already mentioned, aqua therapy or aqua aerobics is another really good one. Um, Pilates is very, very good. And I would say Pilates over yoga. Although, you know, when you're feeling stronger, the Pilates plus yoga is a very good combination as a general rule. But I'm gonna give you um, a simple, straightforward, low tech, non-strenuous, low back strengthening uh, routine. These exercises are heavily researched and evidence-based for back pain sufferers. So just know that if you have back pain, these exercises are safe for you to do because uh, that's usually what people are most afraid of, doing something that makes it worse or brings it back. So take my advice on this one. Um, again, I have a wonderful uh, little routine video which I made a while ago, which I'll post and I will, sh um, oh, it's not here actually, I will, it's on the YouTube channel, so if you're already on there, you can find it, it's low back um, strengthening, but I'll post it afterwards um, just to save time. But I'm gonna do them with you now anyway, so feel free to join me if you want, if you have a mat and a floor, that's all you need. But all you can just watch me do it, have a cup of tea and sit back and relax. So what we're gonna do, if you're not in pain, we're gonna start with, and you might be surprised to hear me say this, a form of a sit-up. Now I say you might be surprised because those who know much about low back pain know that sit-ups are bad for low back generally. Um, but we're gonna do a very safe low back neutral spine curl. Because we do want to strengthen the anterior portion of the abdominal wall, this area here. We want to then strengthen our side muscles. Yeah, the quadratus lumborum and the external and internal oblique muscles. And we want to strengthen our glutes and our low back muscles. So we're gonna work 360 degrees with a very straightforward, simple routine. With everything, bog standard three sets of 10 is a good place to start. 
And what I really encourage you to do is to hold the contraction for a couple of seconds and then relax. So don't just keep going through them as fast as you can uh, so you can get on with your day. Hold, come up slowly, hold, and then go down slowly. So each repetition takes you about four or five seconds, okay? It's about how long you spend under tension. So we're gonna keep our low back in a nice neutral position by having our feet bent. That way you know your low back is nicely supported and not overarched either. You're always gonna keep your, um, your lower back, all of the lower back on the floor with this exercise. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna cross your hands. Well, if you wanna make it very straightforward and very simple and the least amount of strain on the lower back, Put your hands on your thighs and you're going to just slowly curl up until you reach the knees. This is as high as you need to go. You don't need to hook up into a sit-up. That's what's bad for your low back. If we're just curling our shoulder blades off the ground, that's fine because I've still got my whole lower back in contact with the ground. So either you put your hands here and you're just going to Gently stroke up to the knee, hold, and come back down. Tuck your chin in. We don't want you to be looking at the ceiling. Try to look at the knees. That way you know you're protecting your neck. And um, a lot of people will say they get neck pain when they're doing sit-ups, which is usually because they're doing this and straining and sticking their head back. So always keep the chin tucked in and look up between the legs, between the knees. And down. So you do three sets of ten of that. Then, to be extra lazy, you stay in this position to do the next exercise. This one is for the glutes, the hamstrings, and the lower back. Um, first of all, what I recommend you do is squeeze the buttocks, and that then initiates the movement of lifting up into a bridge. Hold and go down, release the buttocks. Squeeze the buttocks and lift. Hold and go back down. This is called a double leg bridge. And the end position should be shoulders to knees are a straight line. We don't want arching. This is too much. It's just squeezing until you're one, like an ironing board from the knee to the shoulder, uh, knees to the shoulder, and then down. Squeeze the buttocks and lift. Remember, it's a buttock as a glute exercise, so squeeze the buttocks first to make sure that you're activating the right muscle. And again, you would do three sets of 10 of that. So now we've done the front, we've done the back, or part of the back, the buttocks. Now we're gonna do side bridges. These can be done again in varying degrees of difficulty. The easiest level would be knees bent, elbow tucked in underneath the shoulder, if you have a shoulder condition, this one can aggravate it, so I would leave it out. But if you don't, then you're going to um, have your body almost in a straight line again, so don't bring the knees up here. So then down there. And then when you're ready, you're just going to lift your hip off the ground a couple of seconds and down. Back up. Two, three, and down. Back up. Two, three, down. It's easiest when the knees are bent, both of them. To make it harder, you can make the top leg straight. And again, lift up. You're pushing it off the bottom knee, of course. And down. Same pattern, holding up a couple of seconds. And then down. If you want to make it extra hard, so the stronger you get, the more you can progress these. You'd have both of your legs straight. And I put the bottom foot forward. You don't have to stack them, some people do, but I, of stability I recommend you have one foot forward, the bottom one, and then again you're going to brace your abdominal muscles and then lift, hold, two, and down. Come up. Don't spend too long at the bottom, which is the rest position. You're going to go straight back up to the side. So that one's quite challenging, so I wouldn't do that one unless you've strengthened your spine for a few weeks first. Um, you should really be feeling it by the third set of ten. If you're really struggling already on the first set, you can well, regress it to make it easier for yourself. Bend the knees or, or just stroke the legs if you're doing this one. Don't 
Oh yeah, with this one, by the way, you can make it harder putting the arms higher up. So they go from here to start with, to here, which is harder, to here, which is the hardest, or you can have straight arms, but I think this is enough to be honest, to start with. Um, I showed you how to progress. Uh, with the glutes bridge, you can also try a single leg bridge. So for that, you bring one knee, tuck it in, then you're gonna lift on the other side only. And down. Um, you might want to swap in between. Push up off the bottom leg, squeezing the glute uh, gluteus muscle. And down. Um, swap and lift up again. So that's how you make that one harder. And the last exercise, so we've done three, we've got our trunk curl, neutral spine trunk curl, glute bridge, which I just demonstrated. And then we've done the side bridges. And the last exercise is called bird dog. Some of you probably know. Start in a quad position, which means on all fours, hands underneath the shoulders. This way, see the camera. Hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath your hips. So you're not like this or like this. You're in what I call like a table position. And you do want separation between the hands and the knees. So don't bring them in. Give more stability, but the point is, we want you to be slightly unstable because then it challenges your core more. And then you want to start off by doing some straightforward leg lifts. You're doing that by bracing your abdomen first, so just a bit of a tensing as if someone was going to poke you in the stomach, you just tend tense slightly. And then in that tensed position, you then extend one leg straight back. You don't want it in the air. Common mistake is for people to lift it too high up. It just has to go straight back to horizontal. Well, that's more than enough. Come back down and then straight to the gap. Other side, of course. So you would do, you'd either do 10 on one side, then 10 on the other side, or you can alternate them to left, right, left, right. Once that's easy, which might not be very long, or it might take you a few weeks, then you can try opposite arm and leg reach. So the trick with this one is to try to have stillness in the torso. So there's no, no over, over bending or twisting or wobbliness. It's about imagining that you've got a bowl of water on your back and you don't want to spill it. So hold very still, very slowly, extend arm and leg, and then down, and then again, stretching but not overreaching, just a horizontal, to go back down. Three sets of 10 on each side. So those are the four exercises, eight, four exercises I recommend uh, for strengthening once your sciatica is under control. So for those of you who have just joined um, or joined later on, I demonstrated first some sciatica relieving exercises. Uh, once the sciatica is under control, then I would recommend Doing the, uh, doing the strengthening exercises because it's really about having a strong spine that then prevents you from having sciatica again in the future. Um, and of course, learning all the good habits that we discussed as well about posture, daily stretching, um, watching the way you lift and bend. Um, I've posted the how to bend safely video there, which I've done on, uh, on YouTube. And, um, and strengthen your back and yeah. Um, as I mentioned, you can do those exercises every day or two as a great introduction to core strengthening. Uh, and following that, if you're getting into it and you want to do more, then you can either speak to uh, your practitioner, if you're seeing your chiropractor or osteopathic physiotherapist, and they'll progress your exercises for you. Or you can try going into a Pilates class. Um, there's mat-based and there's reformer-based Pilates. I personally would go for mat-based. Um, in my opinion, because it's easier. You can do it anyway. You don't need a reform machine. If you're doing reform-based Pilates, that's fantastic. It's really great. It's challenging and, and um, good for you. Um, but map-based Pilates is great because you can do it anywhere in the park, for example, or at home. Um, and it's, uh, you don't need the, the equipment. Um, I'm going to leave the advice there. I'm going to open it up to any questions that you might have. And um, I'll try my best to answer them. Um, if you don't have any questions, I'll just assume that everything you might have asked, I've already, uh, already 
Martin, are you unmuting, Trisha, your question? I haven't got a question. I have to dash. I just wanted to say an enormous thanks. It was really oh. good and I enjoyed it very much. I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you so much. And of course, yeah, go if you need to. Uh, and thank Please you. Soon. Really appreciate it. Bye. Bye. So, um, questions, you can either type them or you can unmute yourself. Well, Owen, uh, it's Paul. So, I just wanted to ask you, um, with the flossing, yeah. um, you had originally, you know, quite a few years ago, shown me a seated floss. Yes. Are you saying, are you thinking this one's better now? No. Well, the thing, I, uh, the reason I chose the, the lying down one is because your whole spine is supported and, and therefore we know that you're isolating the flossing to the leg only. Whereas when you're in a chair, it also relies on having good upright posture and making sure that you're sitting correctly. So because I knew you or know you, um, when, when and I, uh, thank you for saying that you came to see me, when I gave you that exercise, it was because I had, guided you through it. Now that doesn't mean that you can't uh, either do it and you have to do the lying down one. I have a video on the sciatic nerve flossing. Um, neither is superior, but some are more practical. So you might actually be somewhere where you can't lie down on the floor. The sit sitting sciatic, I to speak, the sitting sciatic nerve flossing you can do in a, in a chair at the office. You know, you may not want to get down on the floor. Just to show those who might want to know what it looks like, You would sit usually at the uh, edge of the chair. This is when I'm going to allow you to sit at the edge of the chair. Very nice and upright. And I'm going to do the right leg because it's facing the camera. You would then again point the foot towards you. Remember that's important. And you would move your head back as you straighten the leg. And then head tucked down towards the chest as you bend the leg. Always with the foot pointing towards you. So it looks like this. So this is the sciatic nerve crossing in the chair. Neither is superior to the other, but as a, as I'm giving this as a general uh, video for the, the sciatica, um, I, I can be more assured that those, who, if they're doing it lying down, are less likely to aggravate their symptoms. There's a lot more potential for body movement in this one. Um, and what you want to do is really to keep your torso in a fixed position and just move your head and your leg. I'm not going, with my spine, so that's why um, that's why uh, I, I, I gave you that one. But a good question, actually, it's a good question. And on my YouTube channel, you will see that the sitting sciatic nerve flossing is there, rather than the one I've shown today. Thank uh, you. Thanks, Paul. Any other questions? Again, you can. Um, oh, I can see there's a Abby's mentioned. Oh, you're very welcome. Oh, fantastic! Very glad that you're recovering well. Yes, please send me any questions if you have any. Uh, Abigail, and good luck with your recovery. Um, any other questions? Serge? Hi, hi there, Owen. Um, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to say this is such a big eye opener because last year I was taken into hospital. They, you know, then they established it was a sciatica, yeah. and after that, because I, well, um, work from home all day, maybe once or twice a week I have a very light, you know, tingling and so mm. on. But what you've just shown me is just because I thought it was one of those things you just have to live with. Mm -hmm. No, so, thank uh, you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I think you know that tingling, that prickling, because it's a neurological symptom. Uh, you know, if you if you've had it to quite a bad level in the past, nerve nerve irritation or, or direct compression on a nerve, especially if you've had that, can take quite a long time to fully recover. And many people are left for months or even over a year with that prickling or tingling or numbness can be quite disconcerting. Um, but yeah, doing the flossing can help with that to help uh, uh, to move the nerve and, and help to heal. Because if you imagine the nerve is like the hose pipe and you're standing on the hose pipe, if you never move the foot and you never move the, the hose pipe, that part of the hose pipe can get worn down and really damaged. So by flossing, if you imagine my, this is the, uh, the disc or the bone on the nerve, you're pulling the nerve out from underneath the compression, the site of compression. And that means that this part of the nerve, which was underneath, now has a chance to heal. And this part of the nerve is now compressed. So it might sound illogical because you're now compressing another part of the nerve, but what you're actually doing is you're just keeping the nerve free from constant irritation. So that's what the, that's the kind of logic behind the flossing or part of the logic behind the flossing. 
uh, and also to break down adhesions that can form between the neighboring tissue and the nerve. So the nerve literally gets stuck because of inflammation, you get all this gluey like uh, uh, gluey like molecules occurring and that stick that stick tissues together. So flossing helps to free things effectively. Um, so yeah, thank you for your comment. Yeah, oh, brilliant, okay. absolutely brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> um, anyone else want to ask a question? I'm happy to stay for a few more minutes or we can leave it there. Again, this is going to be posted on Facebook if you joined after the start, so don't worry about that. Um, Instagram completely broke down halfway through, so sorry about that. Um, and just to say, like I said, if you are having symptoms and you try the exercises, they don't work, don't be disheartened. You know, it doesn't mean that something specifically, you know, <laughs> you're, yeah, you're a, you're a write-off. Just be a practitioner who's even more capable. So don't forget to follow our Facebook page as well. I'm gonna. This is my first official uh, event like this. I've done some live stuff before on webinars, but uh, I'm gonna try and do. You know, we had someone mentioned they'd like me to do one on scoliosis, um, which I'm gonna consider. Uh, but there'll be neck pain, headaches, and things like that. Any suggestions? In. So best way to know about those coming is by following us on Facebook. Um, I also post on our newsletters. Uk, uh, the backspace.co.uk um, and sign up for the newsletter. This is your Owen, I think you might have your um, handle oh, on your mic. Oh, sorry. Um, did you miss <laughs> Just the last bit, last three sentences. Oh, okay. I was just saying I'm going to be posting, um, I, I post about these events events on our Facebook page, so follow us on Facebook, which is Backspace Chiropractic Fitness. Um, there is another Backspace in Australia, that's not me, um, Backspace Chiropractic Fitness in Tapham. Uh, sign up for the newsletter on the backspace.co.uk. And um, yeah, have a lovely weekend. And uh, the, the, the video will be on Facebook for you all to watch again if you missed it or you want to share it with someone you think might like it or find it useful. Um, oh, Barbara, uh, would like a session on plantar fasciitis. Absolutely, yeah, I, I do cover it. I do manage it. Um, at Backspace, we really specialize in, in sports injuries, so it's very common in runners, plantar fasciitis. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely do that. Um, you know, it's again one of those things you have to manage in a few ways. You have to stretch your hamstrings, stretch your calves. Don't just think all the, it's all in the foot. It is, but you need to also look holistically above and below, um, so further up the chain. So your glutes, your hamstrings, your calves, and rolling the foot on a ball. Just very quickly, tennis ball for if it's a very painful place. You can do it sitting as well, so there's not too much force. Uh, but otherwise, you can buy specific massage balls, which can help release um, release the plantar fascia. And another tip is to put a frozen bottle of water um, in. The, well, put a bottle of water in the freezer, uh, full, so it's a solid block of cylindrical ice, and then you can roll your foot over, and that's a really wonderful um, feeling if you have plantar fasciitis. Um, uh, Richard, I have recurrent post-related disc problems and continue to work out just keep going. Okay, good. Yeah, that's the, probably the best thing you can do. You now know, know how to help relieve your symptoms when they, when they become really bad. Uh, the McKenzie is very good, as I mentioned, for disc problems specifically. Um, and the Pilates, you know, when, in those times where you're feeling better, don't just, you know, forget about it. That's when you do something about it even more. Um, Great. Uh, Marina, have you got your hand up because you'd like to ask a question? Unmute yourself if you do. Or maybe you're just saying hi. Okay, Marina Morelli, you're okay, I'm assuming, but uh, wait a few seconds. Okay, I think we're down to nine people now, so I'm guessing people are running off to enjoy their Saturdays. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Owen. Bye-bye. You. You're welcome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. Yeah, thanks.